Hello and welcome to Humane Voices, the official podcast of the Humane Society of the United States. I'm Kelly, your host, and my co-host today is the returning co-host champ, Chad. It is officially holiday season, and with that comes a lot of incredible, wonderful things, the parties, the gathering with family, the arguing with family, but enough about my family. (laughs) Um, But best of all, the food. I'm a foodie. I love food. I love lots of it. Today, we have a special guest, Kate Mayer, who is the Louisiana State Representative of the Humane Society Veterinary Medical Association, also known as HSVMA. She is going to talk food with us, but specifically, she's going to talk about some of the holiday foods that we as humans may enjoy, but are really not great for our loved, uh, beloved pets, our cats, and our dogs. So with that, welcome, Kate. It is good to have you on and have a doctor with us today, an expert. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thanks so much for coming, for joining. Uh, Kate, so you, you've had a lot of experience in this. You, you've been a vet for a long time. Um, have you, tell us that you've had a lot of experience with, with hearing about people, oh, my dog got into this during the holidays, that sort of stuff, pets snacking on stuff they shouldn't have. Absolutely. I've worked uh, many a holiday in the trenches. And um, with Thanksgiving particularly, um, veterinarians can sometimes call the day after Thanksgiving pancreatitis day. Oh my and, God. And not necessarily to to make light of the situation, but more so to be prepared to treat these pets because um, pancreatitis can, you know, can be a serious condition. There's a spectrum for it. Um, mild cases and then very severe cases. And this can be because Pets, uh, dogs in particular, indulge on foods that are high in fat, and um, and they require treatment. So I'm I'm curious because I think we all picture around the table people are like you know handing food to the dog. I mean, are we talking mostly dogs or cats? And I gotta say, I assume it's mostly dogs, but I have a cat Crosby who I mean will eat absolutely anything food or otherwise <laughs> but i'm going to guess it's mostly dogs with food um it's mostly dogs with cats it's more they'll get into flowers they'll kind of mess around with centerpieces um or any decorations you know more so around christmas time uh you know or, or other holidays they'll they'll get into a tinsel and things of that nature Yep. Tinsel yarn poinsettias, I know, are poisonous for uh, animals and cats tend to like that. So mostly dogs. Mostly dogs. They can be rather sneaky uh, when there you know, is a large table of food around or even during preparation, they can be real sneaky. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think of those foods like the I mean, everybody's crowded around in, in a house and they're talking and haven't seen each other in a while. And all the while there's food like sitting at the edge of a table somewhere and the dog's like, oh, baby, I can't, I can get to that. Yeah. At the table, in the kitchen, you know, watching the football games. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It is a carnival of delights for dogs. It's too much temptation for them. They, uh, yes. they can't help themselves. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I, I was thinking before, it's not even necessarily that maybe the owner might be the smartest person in the world as to what feed to feed the dog or not feed the dog during the holidays. But so many people are there and the dog is running around, you know, hitting everybody on the leg, Grandpa Joe and uh, Uncle Sam or whatever. (laughs) We're going uh, to the kids table and the kids are all trying to suck up to the dog. So, of course, they're like (laughs) under the, you know, the cloth. Absolutely. Kate, you see a lot of that, I assume. Yes, we do. Um, You know, it's not necessarily... You know, you you feeding the wrong food, but um, a family member, just like you said, may feed the wrong food or maybe your pet has a certain condition and they eat a prescription diet, you know, and and no one else knows that and they can get into trouble that way. Um, but there is certainly a lot of commotion going and going on in the house at that time. And, and um, you know, the, the pet sometimes just, you know, <laughs> sneak around and um and and that's when they, they you know get into trouble. 
<laughs> well, and some things are actually, I mean, not just that upset their stomach or not good for them. You know, we hear about chocolate, but um, what about things that are actually poisonous? And I think you've had some experience, haven't you, Doc? I that? did um, do an externship at the um, pet poison helpline, and uh, and that gave some pretty interesting insight. Like we were just mentioning the commotion, um, there's extra family family members in the house, and you know maybe some take medication, and those medications are left out on the counter. You know, and, and the dog thinks, "Ooh, those are shiny," or "Ooh, that's new." Uh, or cats as well. And um, so we got a lot of calls about uh, dogs getting into, med into medication. Or, you know, if your family's like my family and you need those headache pills uh, towards the end of the evening, they'll get into those as well. And so we'll get those calls. <laughs> so this is a, a side note to all dysfunctional families um, and those that are going to be maybe a little jacked up on meds. Make sure and keep those in your pocket, in your purse, you know, in the uh, the vanity and in, uh, in the bathroom. Good, good tip, Doc. Well, and another piece, too, I, that makes me think uh, so many states now, and this is a little touchy, but so many states are legalizing marijuana. Um, and that's obviously very bad for dogs. Um, oh, but yeah. people with edibles and things like that just lying around or maybe in dad's pocket that's hanging on the on the on a chair somewhere and a dog can easily get into that. Kate, have you heard of things like that happening? Yes, I've definitely heard of things and seen things like that happening. And the most important thing in those cases is just to be honest about what has occurred with your veterinarian. And we are in, we never judge. We just want to know so that we can treat appropriately. Whatever the, the situation is, we just want to help the pet. Yeah, the dog got into dad's uh, jacket pocket and then suddenly he's watching like Cheech and Chong movies. Uh, Cheech and Chong. And then how do you tell if dogs will eat almost anything? How do you, what are the telltale signs? I mean, obviously if they have the munchies, it's like, well, did they eat dad's or grandpa's <laughs> or, you know, uncle Joe's gummies or are they just being a dog? But that is true. You know, that's a really good point, Chad, that with states now legalizing that and it and around the holidays people are maybe more apt to partake in things such as you know alcohol maybe or or even you know non-alcoholic drinks or gummies you know and that's something to consider too i assume doc i mean what what folks are drinking dogs may get into or cats right um alcoholic beverages or diet drinks too um may contain xylitol or you know mixed drinks or um, what have you. And sometimes dogs in particular are attracted to um, al alcohol, depending on, you know, what it smells like or um, those type things. And Or sometimes you have the ob obnoxious person that thinks it's funny to, you know, feed a, a, the dog beer or what have you. So um, those situations occur too, and, and those dogs need treatment. So, you know, disorientation, um, you know, if, if your dog is not acting like it normally would, <laughs> um, those would be um, situations where you would want to seek treatment. Hey, you mentioned um, xylitol. I wanted to mention that, call that one out. I think that I've been hearing more and more about that one recently, and it, it seems like it's in so many things that people don't realize, and that's really toxic for dogs. Isn't that true? Absolutely. That one um, can be really scary. And, you know, we used to associate it with, you know, gum, sugar-free gum, but now it's hidden in peanut butter, you know, which can now be in desserts that people are bringing over for, you know, for, for the end of at the end of dinner. Um, but yeah, you, you know, it's in things that we don't necessarily think of energy drinks, you know, if, if one spills. Um, and it's an, it's an artificial sweetener. And just for, for listeners, because it's, it's spelled not necessarily like it, it sounds, but xylitol, if you're looking at ingredients of things, are you worried maybe your animal at them? It's um, X, Y, L, I, T, O, L. So xylitol is absolutely not good for for dogs, what are some other things, Doc, uh, that might be on the tables this year or things that we're going to be eating and enjoying that absolutely you have to make sure uh, your pets are not getting into? Right. Well, so um, anything that we might consider kind of high in fat, like, um, and I know not everyone, you know, eats, eats animal meat, but like a, a Turkey skin, any kind of fried, um, fried animal meat, a gravy, 
um, chocolate, onions, um, garlic, raisins, uh, grapes. We raisins? Alcohol. Who's eating raisins this holiday? <laughs> is that is that shoved in some casserole? I'm from the <laughs> South and I know they will shove some things in, you know, jello or casseroles. But but yeah, so maybe that's reason number 35 to keep the raisins out of the dish. Yes. And I've seen raisins in brownies and I'm from the South no. too. We don't invite them. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Listeners just know. No. Yeah. Well, a couple of things, Kate, you mentioned like onions and garlic. I mean, those are things that lots of things are cooked in, right? Yeah. So it's like sauces and you said gravy and, but like even the turkey maybe has been marinating in something with garlic and onions. And then you think turkey is fine and then it's a problem for your dog. Right. Or you have that green bean casserole and you think, oh, green beans, those are okay. But not when they, you know, have the mushroom um, sauce and the onions on top. That's when it gets dangerous. Yeah. So even like stuffing or, and you mentioned people, you know, might not be eating traditional turkey, but might have a vegan or vegetarian option, um, but it could be cooked with onions or with garlic or with things like that. So whether it's a, um, you know, bird turkey or a vegan turkey. Definitely keep it away from the pets, it sounds like. Right. What about, because I'm thinking, again, my my cat will eat anything, whether it's food or otherwise. Um, I mean, there is lots of things on the table that maybe a pet wants to get into that they should not eat. What are some of those things to think about beyond just the, the edible food? You know, these were surprising to me when I first started seeing these cases, but the dogs, maybe cats too, but more dogs in particular will eat paper towels and napkins and, you know, the little <laughs> boats sometimes. Just, they'll eat anything on the table, paper, potpourri, um, you know, and, and those things can be super dangerous because they don't necessarily show up real well on a radiograph. And so if you see them eat those things, please let us know. Um, but, oh, and sticks of butter, you know, that's more in the food prep um, area that, that can be um, troublesome because we get back into the pancreatitis arena. Uh, but wow. those are some of the things you wouldn't necessarily think of. I've eaten so mean- questionable things in different Thanksgivings, but never like a full stick of butter. <laughs> yeah. Everything's better. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like someone from Louisiana. <laughs> so what about you mentioned gravy and so any like sauces seem to be something, you know, to definitely avoid too. Right. Because they're so high in fat and a lot of times they're made up of multiple ingredients, um, you know, like garlic and I'm not a cook really, but yeah, I know that there's multiple ingredients that go into things <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so that's, that's what gets you into the rougher territory there. Sure. Yeah. Well, let's, let's uh, switch from the negatives to the positives here. Um Give us some ideas on holiday foods that, that can be good for dogs or, you know, are, are okay for dogs in smaller doses. Obviously, you don't want to go overboard on on feeding your dog from the table. But what is there stuff that, that you think is, oh, we can consider that for the dog? Absolutely. Yeah, it's always good to get into the positives, right? <laughs> uh, well, we have pumpkin, unless it's from Halloween, in which case it might be moldy. <laughs> but there's like canned pumpkin um, without any additions like sweeteners and things like that. Just plain canned pumpkin. You can do green beans, um, uh, peas, carrots, um, apples, you know, if there's no core or seeds, um, spinach, though, you know, let me spinach? know. Spinach? Do dogs dog- like spinach? <laughs> I was just going to say, let me know if your dog goes for that. (laughs) (laughs) Mine certainly won't. won't. Um, Corn and off the cob, there are definitely no cobs. Um, A sweet potato, things like that. Gotcha. Okay, that sounds great. Um, One other piece that you mentioned uh, before we were on mic, um, there's so many people coming in and out, the chance that your dog might, you know, take a chance and hop out the door. Um, Is that happen occasionally i'm guessing yes that applies to you know dogs and cats um if any you know any of those kind of sneaky animals there but yes 
there is so much commotion and doors are opening, front doors, back doors, you know, and if family members don't have pets or they're just not thinking, you know, it's a massive opportunity for pets to, to get lost. And if that, you know, if a vet clinic isn't open on that day, you know, they're not going to be standing ready with a microchip scanner, you know, to, <laughs> to reunite pets. So, I always think it is so important to make sure everyone is wearing an appropriate collar with an up-to-date ID tag with your phone number because then it is readily available uh, available to the person um, who has found your pet and they can contact you right away. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great point that because, you know, beyond just the food on the table and in the kitchen, but make sure to kind of know where the pet's at, keep track of that. And you're going to have so many people, maybe, you know, folks that the dog or cat are not familiar with lots of little kids potentially that maybe, you know, haven't interacted around animals. So it seems like there are a lot of things to just watch out for to make sure that it is in fact a good holiday for everyone, including the pets. So I really appreciate um, those tips, but on the off chance, um, you know, something, uh, one of your animals, or if you're visiting someone and they have an animal does get into something, whether it's the paper towels, the cannabis gummies, um, you know, the, the garlic mashed potatoes or the turkey, what should someone do? Sure. There are multiple resources now, nowadays that weren't available years ago, but um, there are websites now that you can reference, um, you know, multiple great uh, veterinary poison control websites. And there are also associated apps, you know, and so if you're unsure, if something is poisonous, you can reference those. Some of the apps, I believe, have calculations. So you can put in your pet's weight and what, you know, the chocolate content, how much they ate, those sort of things, and they can give you a good idea of whether or not the pet is in trouble. You can also call these uh, poison helplines and they can give you assistance, uh, whether or not you need to bring your pet in or whether they can help you induce vomiting at home. If they think that's appropriate, they may say, no, absolutely do not do that. <laughs> You'll cause more damage. Or they may say, run, you know, don't walk over to your nearest veterinary emergency clinic so, or or vet clinic if yours is open. So um, it's just really important. If you're unsure, go ahead and start driving over to the emergency clinic and you can have a pal look up on the website on the way and you can always turn around. But um, if you're unsure, seek treatment right away. Kate, thank you so much. Anything else from you, Kelly? Uh, any other questions for Kate? No, I'm I'm just excited about all the food I'm about to eat. Now I'm better informed to keep uh, my cats, at least Jude, you know, Crosby sometimes I actually have to put him, uh, which which is a, a tip for folks. I sometimes, while I'm cooking and can't watch everything, have to put him in another room during the process of of that cooking. So I, I appreciate the tips for myself. So I'm sure listeners will, um, you know, can enjoy the holidays a little bit more knowing this. So thank you so much, Doc, for, for joining us. And to all of our listeners, we hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We are certainly grateful to you and um, happy holidays. 